Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where we do painting tutorials. I'm currently trying to make videos at least twice per week, so that's why you have been having these little surprises midweek, usually Thursday videos. So I start by taping down my paper with some masking tape, that way it stays flat as I paint. And I find that adding a binder clip, if you have a lot of pages in your sketchbook, really helps make it stay flat and open. I apply cadmium yellow on the horizon where I have my mountain sketch. Then I use dark chrome yellow and pale geranium lake from the set. And for the top of the sky I just use some ultramarine blue. I'm using only the primary colors. For this, as you can tell on the reference picture I have open on my smartphone, then I color the road markings with my cadmium yellow and I add a bit of dark chrome yellow. I blend everything from light to dark using a watercolor brush. So I start from the yellow towards the red and the blue. I clean my brush and I repeat a couple of times, making sure everything is smooth, everything has fully dissolved and there are no visible pencil markings peeking through the background. I just go left to right, right to left from the bottom upwards. If there is an area that needs ink, then I just go over that. I activate the road markings just by tapping my brush on top of them. I don't really need to blend these, but I do want a smooth sky. For example, where I got that edge on the left side, I just go over that. While it dries, I take a scrap piece of paper and I apply my three colors, my cadmium yellow, pale geranium lake and ultramarine with a bit of black. These are going to be my little mixing palette. While the sky still dries, I take my grassy green and I apply it slightly above the edge of the road. I add some earthy green on top of it. I'm going to build up on the green because greens straight out of the set are usually pretty icky and I don't suggest using them unless you're going to mute it down. I apply some of that dark chrome yellow and I'm going to use a lot of layers throughout this painting so what you see now is not the final result. I will be adding two three layers to the road and the grass. I add some pale geranium where the road ends further up in the distance and bring it down a bit. That way it looks like it's reflecting the sunset. I mix the red with the blue on the scrap piece of paper to get a violet and paint a distant mountain on top of the road. Then I mix all of the colors together and use this warm gray to paint the base layer for the road. I apply the mix towards the bottom of the page where the viewer is and then I blend in one direct motion from the top of the road where I added the red towards my gray mix. Then I clean the brush and repeat until the road has been colored completely. I try to avoid the yellow reflectors on the ground and work around them. Then I activate the grassy green areas on the side of the road. The mountain was a bit too bright so I add another layer on top of it with the same mix I used for the road. Once dry I take black and color the sides of the road with it. I try to leave two white stripes on each side of the lane. I also color the top of the grassy area black and add some loose tree shapes right beneath the mountain. I repeat the same steps on the right side of the painting. Then I add a second layer to the road with black. I focus it mostly towards the bottom from where we are viewing this picture. Notice how I'm using diagonal strokes, aiming them towards the top of the road. I sharpen my pencil to a fine point and outline the road markings. I add tiny horizontal black lines across the markings to make it look worn down. And again, I repeat the same exact steps to the other side. 
I start blending the distant trees with a tapping motion and barely any water. I clean my brush, activate the Venetian red under it and then the black. For the road, first I dry my brush on a napkin and dry brush from the top of the road downwards almost diagonally. I clean and dry the brush again and repeat until I have activated everything. I admit the markings are a bit tricky because I have to go around them and watercolor pencils dry very fast. It would have been better off masking them with tape or masking fluid, but hey, I just love making my life more complicated than it already is. While that dries, I add a small amount of orange, blue and red to the grass to move it down and make it look less like a Stabilo textbook highlighter. And I go over with my brush with barely any water. For reference, when I say barely any water, my brush's capacity is 4 ml and by the time I had finished the whole entire painting, I still had some water left over. And for the Americans out there, that's less than a leveled teaspoon. Back to the painting, I add some black areas in the grass and then I sketch some utility poles to the right, making them smaller in the distance and bigger as they get near us. And then the wires that connect them, I sketch some fence or traffic barriers, I don't know, I can't really tell from the picture, but anyway, I just draw tiny vertical lines on the bottom of the utility poles. If drawing is not your thing, there is a traceable for this drawing and many many others over at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts, and like always, you can find a full list of all of the supplies used, mentioned and recommended down in the description box along with the reference picture. I apply the third and last layer to the road, I focus the black just on the bottom of the page where the lanes are the widest. Again, I'm applying it pretty much diagonally following the direction of the perspective. Then I activate it with a dry brush from light to dark just like with the previous layer. Lastly, I add some finishing touches. I thought I defined the white borders a bit better with a white marker and I sketch a fence on the left over the black area. And if you have been watching this channel for a while, you know I can't leave a painting without adding some stars and a crescent moon. I like to give special thanks to my patrons for the month of August, please let me know if you enjoy this kind of videos by liking, commenting and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm currently trying to reach 20,000 subscribers somewhere within September and it would mean the world to me. Thank you all for watching and we'll see each other in the next video.